In this lecture, we're going to do a couple more examples of vector line integrals phrased in terms of work. We visited these notions when we derived the form of a vector line integral, but let's just restate them. As an object moves along a path C, which we've parametrized in the correct direction with some vector valued function R of t, then a force F, represented by some background vector field, does work on the object according to the line integral of f dot dr over c. Over here I put the derivation that we saw last time just to restate that. So what we imagine doing is chopping up our path into little pieces and computing force dot displacement for each piece. But displacement we could represent with a vector difference. So these are the position vectors for two points on the curve. And then we take their difference vector and that takes us from one point to the next. So that's like a little vector that represents displacement along the curve. The sign of the work depends on whether or not the displacement of the object mostly aligns with the vector field or against it. So if our object moves in a direction which points mostly in the same direction as the vector field, the work is positive. If we move against the vector field, the work is negative. Let's compute the work done by the force f of x and y equals e to the 2x y squared in moving an object along the path x equals y cubed from 0, 0 to 1, 1. The first step is to parametrize this path. Here, x is given as a function of y. So let's let y be t so that x is t cubed. And then for t values, notice y is going from 0 to 1, so t will go from 0 to 1. Next, we need to evaluate our vector field along this path. So we do f of r of t, which will be f of t cubed t, which will return us back e to the 2 times t cubed t squared. Next step is to compute the velocity vector. OK, so term by term differentiation gives us 3 t squared 1. OK, now we can set up our integral. The work that's done is this vector line integral along this path, which we're going to compute as the integral from 0 to 1 of what we computed in step 2 dot what we computed in step 3. So the force evaluated along the path dot the velocity vector. Always after you've done a dot product, the result is a scalar. So if you feel like you're integrating a vector, you're not doing it correctly, you need to take a dot product here and get back a scalar. In particular, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. 3t squared e to the 2t cubed plus t squared dt. For this first term, to integrate this by hand, I'm going to use u substitution where u is 2t cubed, which means that du is 6t squared. So what is essentially 3t squared dt will get replaced with 1 half du. So that looks good. OK, and then the second term, I'll go ahead and anti-differentiate that. So I'm basically going to split this into two integrations. Let me do that to the right. So 3t squared dt, as we just said, that's going to be half du and e to the u. So half e to the u du. When t is 0, u is 2 times 0. So the lower bound for u is also 0. When t is 1, u is 2 times 1 cubed. So we'll integrate from 0 to 2 this integral with respect to u. And then for the second term, let me go ahead and anti-differentiate t squared to get 1 third t cubed, evaluated at 1, subtract off evaluating at 0. OK, so to finish up this work computation, we anti-differentiate. We just get 1 half e to the u plus plug in 1 and you get 1 third, plug in 0, you get 0, so plus 1 third. So overall, it's e squared over 2 minus 1 half plus 1 third. Force was measured in Newton's distance in meters. So the unit here is Newton meters or joules. Now we have a problem with work done by a force with three components moving an object along a space curve, but the setup will ultimately be the same. So the first thing we need is our parametrization, which is given to us. R of t equals t cosine t sine t for t values going from 0 to 1. Next, we need to evaluate our vector field on this curve. So f of r of t, 
will be the x coordinate times the y coordinate, so that's going to be t cosine t. x times z is t sine t. And then x squared is t squared. Next, we need the velocity vector, so let's compute r prime of t. We get 1 negative sine of t cosine of t. Now we can at least set up the integral. I might not finish the anti-differentiation by hand, but let's go ahead and write down how we would compute this work. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. What we get from taking the dot product of f of r of t and r prime of t. So that's going to be t cosine t minus t times sine squared of t plus t squared cosine of t. Okay, this isn't a very pleasant integral to do by hand, but the setup is done. So at this point, it's just a single integral. The next step would be to anti-differentiate with respect to t and plug in the bounds. Okay, so I'll leave that example there. See you next time.